Hello, welcome to this section of Circuit Analysis Tutor. Here we're going to continue working with capacitors and learning how to use the formulas and equations and ideas that we've uh, introduced earlier to solve some problems. So here we have a very simple uh, fragment of a circuit. Uh, we have terminals A and B over here, and we have two capacitors. One of them is two microfarads, the other one is eight microfarads. And notice in our circuit we are given that the current flowing through both of these capacitors, which by the way are in series, is labeled I, so that's the current I. The voltage across this capacitor is plus minus, that's the orientation it's labeled, and it's labeled V1. This guy's labeled V2, uh, again oriented plus minus. Notice the sign convention is, it seems to be appropriate because the voltage drop across these capacitors is also in the direction of the current flow. So, so far this makes sense. Secondly, we're given some additional information. We're told that the initial values for these capacitors, uh, the voltage V1, initially at time zero is negative 10 volts, and the voltage across V2 initially is negative 5 volts, and we're also told that when the clock starts, when sort of like we start observing the circuit at T0, if t, as T goes bigger than zero, the current flow through this circuit is 240 times E to the minus 10 T and the unit is microamps. All right, so we're given lots of information. We're given the circuit, we're given the values, we're given the orientation of the voltages and the currents, we're told the initial values of the voltages and the currents, and we're told what this current basically is as T goes on to infinity. The question is, at, as T goes to infinity, how much total energy is stored in the capacitors? How much total energy is stored in the capacitors? All right, so when you think about it for a second, we've already talked about energy storage in a capacitor, and we said it goes as, what, well, energy storage is one half times C, the capacitance, times V squared, which is the voltage. All right, so, and also notice that the current that we're given that's flowing through these capacitors is 240 times this exponential. When you see an exponential with a negative sign like this, then you need to start thinking that it's decaying. That's what that's physically showing you. If you plot this current, it's actually starting high and it's decaying like that. So as time goes on, basically the current's coming in and these capacitors basically are charging up. The current is going down, 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 down. Eventually, everything's totally charged. Everything reaches steady state. The current goes to zero as T goes to infinity because this term drops to zero. And then there's some final value of voltage on these capacitors. And then once we know the final value of, that, of those voltages on those capacitors, it's just one half times C times V squared uh, you know, to get there and to get the individual uh, energy storage. Now the other thing I want to point out before we start solving this is that the initial values are given as negative 10 for this and negative 5 for this. What this means is, the, let's look at V2 for instance. The drawing says that V2 is labeled plus minus, right? So if V2, if the initial value were 5 volts, positive 5 volts, then we would know that oriented just like this, it would be 5 volts. But V2's initial value is negative 5 volts. That, so that just means is that when the clock starts, the initial value of this voltage is actually flipped around the other way, negative to positive, because of the negative sign. Also the same thing here. We have it drawn this way, so the fact that the initial value is negative just means that initially the voltage is flipped around. That just means that when I start looking at the circuit, maybe I already charge these capacitors up kind of backwards initially, and then I hook it into the circuit, and then I observe what's going on. You don't need to concern yourself with how did the initial conditions happen. You just need to concern yourself with, okay, at time zero, these capacitors have these voltages. In this case, they just happen to be opposite of the way that they're drawn here, but mathematically, we leave them as negative numbers, and that's how we track it, all right? And then as time goes on, 